Hello, everybody. I uh, want to share something I have been working on f for my whole life, almost. I was uh, watching an episode of Star Trek, and uh, I was like 15 years old, and uh, a guy comes out of a portal, and, uh, or no, it, it, a guy, they time travel to 1930. And when they're in 1930, uh, McCoy arrives and he's high on drugs and he attacks this hobo. And then the hobo um, mugs him when he passes out uh, and, and steals his phaser. And then he goes and accidentally vaporizes himself. And I always, you know, said to myself, well, what the hell would have happened if, uh, you know, he did that like what would be what would be the consequences of that guy vaporizing himself and that's where this came about so uh, I had help from people over the years I had talked to people about it I had uh, gathered little stories and ultimately what I did was I created like a, almost like a Star Trek fan fiction version of H.G. Wells's Things to Come mixed with like The Stand so <laughs> it, it got a little out of hand and just recently I have been able to resurrect it by scanning all the old legal pads and notes and things like that. And what we have here is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 110 years of history <laughs> that happened as the result of that phaser. <laughs> and, uh, some of these stories were written for years, sometimes as little writing projects, sometimes just things to keep me busy, sometimes things to answer questions. Uh, it evolved over time. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Yeah, I got the moment that it happens. And then I got this butterfly effect story, which I wrote a couple of times over the years. And um, it's just the story of how Edith Keeler, played by Joan Collins in the episode, and how she was like this you know, really important social worker. But it's the reason why she's well known so far in the future as being like, you know, she's been more or less the Mother Teresa or the Jesus of Star Trek because she promoted this concept of, you know, peace. Uh, but she did it in 1930. And um, as a result of her death, it didn't happen. But had she done it, she would have prevented the U.S. from getting into World War II. Uh, so my story ends up with the tramp <clears throat> where the guy who vaporizes himself. Uh, uh, when did I write that one? God, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he goes and he steals. Uh, he continues to go on his merry way and he breaks into some houses. He steals uh, stuff. Um, he, he breaks into this house and uh, steals this kid's college fund and spends it all and just, you know, goes out on the town, uh, when he finds a windfall. Um, but he keeps coming back to the mission. <clears throat> and, uh, anyway, that one was interesting. Um, then you got the story of the kid he robbed and he gets a different path, which actually leads him into the war, into the second world war. I think I was very inspired by uh, American Pop when I was watching this, when I was working on this at one point in time. Uh, then we actually have, like, the result of Operation Paperclip as a, um, as a guy who does a genetics experiment, and he builds a, more or less, builds a superhuman. And I have some of these stories, and some of them are really scary, and some of them are like Stuart Little. <laughs> um... Actually, the Operation Paperclip story, some of those are just straight up giallos. <laughs> There's a story of a, a Sung ancestor who has escaped the uh, um, German military. Um, old one. Uh, the former one. <clears throat> and uh, he's on a boat basically killing everybody so that way he can escape when it disembarks in, uh, in New York. <laughs> Um, let's see. 
uh, I did a lot of TV parodies. So when um, uh, this character grows up and he goes uh, on television a lot, he's kind of Forrest Gumping his way through history. His adult life is basically like a Forrest Gump type story. Uh, then we have, oh, so when we get in the 21st century that there's a play about him, how he has become this, you know, powerhouse person. And we see the, the diverging of time. Uh, that one's pretty cool. Cause, uh, it's, it's like in the year 2001, but it happens like a week after nine 11 and still airs uninterrupted. Hmm. Um, but there's consequences, right? Because we're headed towards World War III because eventually that's got to happen. What we're seeing is a different world here. Some of these are just outright funny. Like there's this one, uh, what is it? Uh, Rebel Rebel. <laughs> I wrote that one and I'm still putting it together. I think I was inspired by Animal House. <laughs> um, especially ABC always be conspiring that one is is definitely animal <laughs> um there's this cool one i gotta get that one up containment that's like a zero dark 30 story where they um um our main augment is deciding whether or not he's gonna break his uh brother from another mother who's con out of his containment facility um and we get up to the point where like he, he builds this um, this haven in the middle of the United States to uh, protect people who are augmented and stuff. Um, and then the attack on it. And then um, there's like a volume two that involves the trek from uh, the middle of Colorado to California. And it takes place only over a period of about four weeks. <clears throat> But uh, it, it's kind of got this weird feeling of, is this Lord of the Rings or <laughs> it, it's actually very fun. So anyway, I just wanted to show that off. I'll enter into a couple of the stories in other videos.